back everyone in today's video i'm going to kind of break down what the flow actually means so this video will be more for beginner traders and beginners to unusual whales so let me start at the beginning here so when you bring up unusual whales it's going to bring you to unusualwhales.com and this would be your main page so if you come right up here to flow it's going to bring you to the flow and this is where a lot of traders spend most of their time so i'm going to break this down very simple kind of go over everything here in the flow just kind of break it down make it very simple for everyone so i'm going to start up here at the top so this is your ticker that you're looking at so this could be spy tesla apple nvidia amd whatever you're looking at so very self-explanatory it's just telling you what security you're looking at so you come over to here it's going to tell you what we closed at for the day or if this is during market hours it's it will show you what the current price is so and then also it will tell you after market down here too. tell you the last trade you can get your put to call ratio so coming over here, so this is your call volume, put volume, call premium, put premium, bullish premium, bearish premium. So I'm not going to dive super deep into these. I'll just kind of give a brief explanation. But so call volume, any if you're buying a call or selling a call, it's going to show up in here. So same with a same with puts. If you're buying a put or selling a put, it's going to show up in here too. So same with call premium put premium call premium you buy a call sell a call it's going to show up there put premium if you buy a put it's going to show up there sell a put it's going to show up there and then your bullish premium bearish premium bullish if you um buy a call sell a put because selling a put is bullish and if for a bearish premium if you buy a put sell a call that will show up in here so I'm going to, I'll touch on this in a little bit, but this is pretty much your neutral cross trades. I don't really pay attention to those, but I'm going to break down these columns here for everybody now. So if, so your first one, self-explanatory again, it will update for your um, time zone. You can change that in the settings, but so you have your date and time. Everything is in military time. So then just coming over here and also if you do move your cursor over these, it will give a good explanation too. if you do forget, but this video, I'm just going to try to dive into it. But so you bring it over so you can see this is a multi leg trade. If you click on that multi leg trade, it will pull up trades that are potentially part of one trade. So. Like with this, you can see the time all the same. So, I mean, this is how um, they have it set up. But coming out of there, I'm not going to dive too deep into that. But if you scroll over it again, it's going to tell you it's a multi-leg trade. You also can trade, like this is a buy to open, sell to open. So all of them and then these ones with a strike through them. Usually a trade's been canceled or they modified it. They could have just canceled the trade or they could have bumped up the bid 10 cents, something, but it's going to show up like that. But moving over to here. So this is just, again, your ticker. So SPY, Apple, Tesla, whatever you're using. So then here you have your side. So this is kind of more for retail traders so you're so most retail traders are gonna buy a put or buy a call so big especially on these bigger mega caps so something smaller you could sell but when you buy you're just buying the right to get a hundred shares at that price and then when you sell you actually need to have the 100 shares for that. So you would need to have 100 shares of SPY to get one contract and sell it. So moving on over here, 
So this is just telling you what strike they bought. So this top person, they bought a 388 put for 10-21-22 with two days to expiration. So right here would be your days to expiration, two days. You have your date of the contract of which it expires. And if you come over to stock, it's going to tell you what the stock was at when they purchased this contract. So if you like kind of timing up the contracts more, you can see what they were at. And if you go and dig into the candles, you can obviously time up and see where they're at. But moving over to the bid and ask now. So this is very important to keep an eye on too. So with people who follow me on Twitter, you know I'll say don't hit the ask right away. So this is why. This is a prime example why. So this spread on this contract is 1934 to 1968. This is a $34 spread. And imagine if you're buying 100 contracts and you just hit the ask, you're going to pay an extra $34 for 100 contracts when you could possibly put in a bid for 1940 and only pay another six over the bid. So this is why it's very important that I always say don't hit the ask. But so this will just tell you the spread of the contracts. I'll find a better spread to show everyone here. They're not usually that wide on spy. But coming down here, let's see if I can find one. So like, yeah, so okay. Buying this 350 put. So 127, 128, 28, that's a good spread. One penny's nice. But coming back up here. So the spot is very good too. The spot will tell you what they actually bought the contract at. So you can see this person. So again, the spread was 1934 to 1968. This person bought it above the ask at 1970. So... If you scroll through here too, you'll see like this person got it right between the bid and ask, 371. This person got it at the bid. And with SPY, usually you'll get filled at the bid, obviously on those tighter spreads. But moving on here. So now you have your size. This is going to tell you the size of the con or how many contracts this person bought. So this person bought 4,000 contracts. That's big, especially, but I'm, I mean, anything, that's a huge amount. So 4,000, and if, I want to see if I can find a good one for you guys. So let me just see if I can find one here. Sorry for going off on a tangent, but let's see. Yeah, a lot of hedging going on before close, but like, here we go. Here's a good one. This person bought 4,000 contracts. And you can see it's not a multi-leg. I like this because this is a one-sided trade. You don't have a multi-leg where if you have somebody in here, they're buying a call put, buying another put, selling a call. This could be a hedge trade. So that's one thing to keep an eye on too. I will make sure if it's a multi-leg trade, but again, just kind of trying to go over here again, me going off on a tangent too, but um, so yeah, that's your size. It'll just tell you how many contracts I got. So a premium is going to tell you how much the trade costs here for this certain trade, not the full multi-leg trade. So self-explanatory again, that's your premium. So 7.88 million here. And then this would be 2.11 mil and 812,000, so on. So coming over here to the open interest. So this is going to tell you what the open interest was on this contract today. So this contract or this strike, the 388 strike, um, had 69.72 at open. And open interest only updates the next morning, so keep that in mind this won't change throughout the day so if you saw somebody get this let's just say 20 minutes ago it's gonna say 69.72 also
So volume, this is just going to tell you how many contracts have changed hands today. So this doesn't mean this volume is gonna turn into this open interest either. So this, uh, so let's say I buy five contracts and I sell the five contracts 10 minutes later, that's gonna count as 10 into the volume chain there. Cause volume is just the, is how many contracts are exchanged. So how many I've bought, how many are sold. So that's a very simple breakdown of that. So coming over to here, so these are your codes. So you can scroll over to them there. There's something nice to look at, but it'll just kind of tell you what's going on here. If, yeah, I'm not going to dig super deep into these, but it's just going to tell you if it's a multi-leg floor trade and all that stuff. Then you just kind of go over them here. I don't look at them that much. It's just telling you how it was transacted pretty much. So now coming over to your flags. So you got floor, floor traders. They're people who work on the stock exchange floor. So, I mean, other videos I went over why it's significant. So, and then you have your cross trades. And this is, you can't really tell when these contracts were bought, when they were sold and all that. So I kind of just ignore these. So I will just kind of, in my mind, pretend I don't see these, but then it kind of tells you sweeps. And again, if you scroll your cursor over these, it will tell you a definition of everything too. Very simple, but this is still a good video to help you break down. So you got your bearish tag, bullish tag, and then neutral tag here. Those are your three that show up here. So anything bearish obviously is going to show bearish. I mean, this is a very nice visual, so you can quickly look at it. And then you can see green, bullish, red, bearish. And you can be like, hey, I want to take a peek at this bullish trade. Versus like if they were clear and you just have to read it and guess. But different story there. But so these here, I'm not going to break them all down. There's a emoji legend. I'll show you guys where that's at here. But this will show you everything in here. So you can see they got it the bid side, ask side. See if I can find some. It'll tell you if it expired weekly. And like if you look at it, I'm just going to pull up Apple here. You'll see all oh, earnings are coming up. It'll tell you very important information here in here. So if you're trading and you do see one and you have, you're kind of confused on what it is, if you come up here into the alerts area and come down to Emoji Legend, it will give you a breakdown of all of these, of all the emojis in here, which is very nice. So otherwise it'd be a very long video if I went over all these, but it'll give you a breakdown of everything in here too. So coming back to the flow here. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. So that's, again, a very, very basic breakdown, kind of more for beginners, too, that are getting used to unusual whales. I know it can seem like a lot of information, but please check out my other videos, too. They will help break down everything. I have videos on how to create watch lists, how to read the flow, how to filter the flow. But... That's all I got in this video for everybody. Um, also want to let you know, so today is October 19th. Unusual Whales is having a sale right now, 15% off. I'll throw the code down in the bio or in the description here. And one more note too. Unusual Whales is getting rid of their lifetime subscription at the end of this month. So if you are really interested in getting a lifetime subscription, take advantage of that 15% off with the link below because that lifetime will be gone. And I have a lifetime subscription. It's, I, it's how I pretty much trade. If I didn't have unusual wills, I wouldn't be making these videos or making watch lists, but I'm going to throw the um, code down in the, description also have a discord so i'll throw that code in the description as well um but that's all i got for everybody today so i hope everybody has a good night and we'll talk to you soon thanks